Hello, and welcome back to Timberborn, the game about beavers and hoarding water. Our goal is to create a prosperous settlement for all beaver kind, all while surviving droughts of ever-increasing length. We're relatively early in this playthrough of Timberborn, update 5. So far we've created a very basic settlement, got some trees and food going, and just barely survived our second drought. At the same time, we just completed our first major dam. The goal is that we're going to be able to survive our next few droughts in a lot better shape. That said, not everything is perfect. We've got the specter of the first bad tide in the near future, and we don't yet have a really good way of handling that yet. Our industry is also not in great shape, because all we have is Jebediah here powering our one lone lumber mill. Our goal for this next episode is going to be to get some of that production finally up and running, as well as start making plans upriver to handle the bad tide, because that's going to be coming pretty soon, and we don't really have an answer for all that bad water coming through. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I'm thinking about is our main production. Now, last episode, we started to look at a plan for how we could set this up, and we're just lacking some of the wood supplies because that was all going to the mega dam. But now that that's cleared up, let's go ahead and get that built up. Now it's going to take a little bit to, to finish building. I'm also, you notice, I'm leaving this open here because I want the beavers to be able to build this and then I'm going to put the other power wheel in just because I don't have another access point to get to this otherwise. But one water wheel does 135 horsepower. That should cover both of these. So we're basically going to be doing 220 demand. Next up. I really want more wood supply because I see a lot of mega dams and mega structures in our future. And we've got this space in here and I think we can put more trees in. Go ahead and put more trees as well as more um, food supply potentially. Now related to this, this is a problematic area because we've got the drought to worry about. In the very beginning of the game, we made this very cheap dam down here that saved the water, but all this dries up downriver. So, all of this, if this is like, say, wheat or anything like that, it's going to be very vulnerable to that drought and it's going to go right away. So related to that, we should probably move our temporary dam a little bit downriver so we can lock in some of this land for that drought, fill in the trees, I think, in the upper part, and then keep the food supply down in here. While I'm building this, you'll see I'm also going to swap to using the first level one tier gate per the first level one gate. And what this is gonna allow us to do is store all the water when the drought hits. We could just fill all these up. Unlike up here where we automatically lose 25% of the water. Now let's go ahead and start making room for those trees. I like straight lines for my road. So we're gonna go do this and we're gonna get rid of all these roads up here. And then in here, we can have a forester, and then we can start building up some of this stuff. And since we have other trees kind of already set up, I'm going to go ahead and go for the go for broke. I'm liking some of these oak trees because we need some mega structures. And for the forester. Let's go ahead and put them there. That way they can go ahead and plant up in here, as well as all this space down in here. Get rid of those temporary lumberjacks. Now let's put them someplace where otherwise we can't use the space. I'm thinking up here. That looks pretty good. We'll put all those oak trees in. I think this is pretty aggressive. This could probably be used later. We might tear this out later when we've got some space farms and more trees up here. Let's go ahead and get rid of all this berries. Berries, absolute garbage food. We don't eat berries. Now all that construction is going to take a little bit to flush through the system. So let's go ahead and take a look 
upriver and start thinking about that bad tide now. I've got a confession. This is my first playthrough of Update 5. I haven't actually played through a bad tide before, but I've got some hint from some of the viewers that what is going to happen is these water sources are going to start producing bad water. And that's going to be pretty awful for us because that's going to immediately contaminate all of our source up here and it's going to flow completely all the way down. What I would love to do is find some way to divert the bad tide. Because what you want to do is basically dump it out as quickly as possible. And so if we found a way that we could take that water, have it come in and then just dump it outside, that would be perfect. But you'll notice in this map that everything is super high around where the water comes in. And I'm guessing that's by design, so you can't get away with that easy strategy. So what we could potentially do is if I'm thinking if we were to dynamite like a hole through here and then build a dam, we could lock off that dam when the bad tide comes and then basically divert it to dumping everything off the map. There's a few problems with that. One, we don't have dynamite. And two, we don't have anywhere near the level of resources necessary to build a dam like that. We are definitely not going to finish that before the first bad tide. So that is making me think that we need a contingency plan. We've got to be able to get through at least one bad tide. In order to do that, we've got to have food stockpiled, and I'm thinking a bunch of water stockpiled. So for now, what I'm thinking is start building a backlog of water. Start making some medium uh, water storage tanks and filling those up with the hope that that's going to get us through the first bad tide. So unlock the first water tank. And let's go ahead and plop a few of those down. I don't want to use the green space because that's someplace where we could grow something. So we've got this little pocket of dead space up here. I'm going to go ahead and use that. Poor Jebediah on his wheel. At least he gets a nice easy access to water. And these, of course, they're going to be blocked until we've got some gears. So I don't want to completely drown out everything. So let's just have that be the first one we're going to build once we've got our first gears. And along with that, let's go ahead and build another water pump in here. Because I'm noticing this water pump or this tank is empty all the time. So I think we're just kind of at the cusp of getting enough water to drink as it comes in. So if we're really going to build up all this backlog, we're going to need some more water coming in faster than we're consuming it. And we still need more food. I always like having excess food coming in. And I know I just planted these with trees, but I'm thinking I might use some of this space temporarily for more farmland in here. We can always tear that out later, because I think later game, or as the game progresses, I'm going to move some of the farming up in here, if this is green fairly often, maybe put another district up in there. But I don't have the resources to build bridges and everything else to get up there, let alone cart everything back. So temporarily at least, let's go ahead and put another farmhouse up in here, and then I'm going to pull out these trees and then have this be kind of farmland. Now we've got way too much production going on. So I, I've tried to prioritize everything first because we are completely strapped for logs. There's no way we can build all of this, but there's a few things I want built earlier than others. So I really do want this Forester to come first. I do want our gears to come first because that's going to start unlocking our first tank. So that's also going to be a high priority. So I think these three things are high priority. This farmhouse, I'm going to lower it as well, just because this farmhouse can do a little bit of double duty in the meantime to keep these planted. Thankfully, we're getting pretty close to our first harvest of oaks. We're at about 34% or 74%, so they're, they're going to come in pretty soon. I also noticed we've gotten to the point where we don't have any more children still, so we probably want another house, which is yet another thing to build that we don't have the resources for. So for now, let's go ahead and add yet another thing into our backlog of construction to do. So I will put this low, and unfortunately we're going to need some infrastructure to get up there. Oops. I'm going to stay with our classic simple lodge. And we're just going to keep on building more and more vertical for these beavers to live in. And 
And it looks like we've got our first water mill being produced. And hopefully soon our first gear workshop. It's that's almost done. It just needs a few more planks. We've got a plank shop here, which is going to be in close proximity. So that's looking very good. Our gear workshop is the last one to be built. And because of that, these are not connected to the water wheel. The water wheel is connected to everything. So we only need three more planks, so we need Jebediah to kick it up in gear. And how's Jebediah doing? He's the one responsible for building all of these. Not super great. Because he is running and nobody is producing anything because we're still limited on logs. There we go. There is kind of trickling in. And there is our first gear shop. We've got some logs that should be coming over to here. Which should go into our lumber mill. Then to gears. And then gears will be stockpiling up here. This can only hold 10 gears. So longer term we're going to have to find some storage for this. But that's okay for the near term because we're going to go ahead and use our first supply of gears for these almost immediately, so I'm not too worried. And you can see the first set of gears starting to come into our medium tank. That's good. Let's go ahead and put those extra oak trees up in here. Now you notice I'm not using this for food yet, because what I'm worried about is drought. This is dying over time, and the food's going to be a lot more susceptible to that, but oak trees and trees, they can last a lot longer in these droughts. And again, our logs are our backlog. So let's do a timber check. We've got 31% on our maples. A few coming in at 80%. Our pines, most of them have been plant eaten through. We've got a few that are due in the next few days. Our growth up here, we're only at 36%, 8% there, so these are all spent. And our oak trees, finally, it looks like we've got our first oak tree about to come in. And there's our very first oak. Excellent, that's exactly what we needed. Cut down all those oaks, we need the lumber. Now looking at that medium tank, we are slowly inching up there, we're just limited on gears. And I'm going to guess that our gear production is probably limited based on planks. Now, thankfully, I do see a backlog of logs starting to pick up here, so that's good news. It should mean that one of these lumber mills is going to be able to start creating and dumping into here. Now, unfortunately, these aren't staffed due to shortages, so I'm going to make this one of them higher priority in the meantime. And here comes our first drought. Excellent. I think we're going to be in good shape for this one, though. We've got our dam supply here. I think we're going to be in really good shape just to kind of trickle out water. I think the only thing I'm really concerned about is the bad tide, since we're not prepared for the bad tide yet. Backlog is slowly clearing up. We've got some new houses in here. I can see the home starting to fill up. We've got access to it. We've got three new babies coming in, and that's going to start helping us clear up that backlog of job vacancies. And only two more gears for our medium tank. And there we are, our first medium tank. Let's go ahead and get water set up in there, just in time for the first route. We've got all these pumping stations, they should start producing water. Another thing I want to take a look at is how our dam downstream is looking. We got pretty close. I'm not sure if this is going to be done before the drought, but that's okay. I don't think we really needed it. It'd be nice to have if it was. Since we're so close, I'm going to bump the priority of this, just in case. One to go, and it just needs planks. We've got three in reserve, and we just need to build two. Come on, guys. You can do it. Just a few more planks, just in time for the drought. Done. We just made it. Now, what I want to do, just to maximize the amount of water that we're going to get, is just before that drought hits, I'm going to block this one off, and then block this one off, just to kind of top everything up as much as we can. So here comes the drought. Let's go ahead and bump that up to one. And that's going to cause a backlog back through everything. As you can see, everything is starting to flood backwards. You can see that flowing all the way back through the system. 
And as it gets to the end here, I'm gonna do the same for the upper river. So the upper river, we're gonna tap that off. And you can see it's starting to, to do the exact same thing. It's gonna create a backlog up here. And that brings us to the drought. You can see our dam down here is holding out okay. So that's keeping all of this nice and green. So that kept us more green during this area. It doesn't get everything. So this oak seedling, it's gonna die in 15 days, but the drought's only gonna last four. So that's not a problem at all. And unfortunately during the drought, of course, your water wheels are going to stop working. So basically all of these are just wasted. Now for the duration of the drought, I'm just going to pause all these to get those workers somewhere else. Longer term, what would really be good is to start making those water or the, the windmills. And then we can start building those up high, using up kind of this dead space up in here where we can't grow anything anyways. That's a good place to put some of our industry. And then we can reserve more of this flat space down here for more of our growing. So during this drought, it looks like it's all coming back down to Jebediah, powering our only plank production. Now that we've cleared some of that backlog, I think it's okay to start building some more homes. Our food seems to be about stable. We've got an increasing number of potatoes. We have some children coming in. We still have four vacancies. More once we start turning these back on. I'd love to see it. Look at them have all that water. We're going to need all that to survive the bad tide. Carry all that water over to our medium tank. Slowly fill it up more and more. Now that our production downriver in the settlement's kind of been secured, we're starting to get ready for the bad tide. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to do up here. Now this is a really natural bowl which I like, which means we could potentially do a, we could do a few things here. One is if we wanted to build like a mega project, we could just dam the entire valley up in here and flood the entire thing. I do like that for like the cheapest distance to fill things, but that's not going to solve the bad tide for us. For the bad tide, I'm thinking the cheapest way might be to route the water across this way or even potentially back and around. Because we could put a dam here, or a levee here, and just push it off, or dynamite like a channel that we could send it through. So to do that, we're gonna need to start building kind of like I'm thinking an inner dam, kind of up in here, over this river. That's gonna be a pretty big undertaking. We're gonna need access to both sides of the river, and we're gonna to need to start building up walls here. So we're gonna need a lot, of, a lot of logs and a lot of builders up in here. I'm thinking the cheapest thing might be just to build some of these platforms. I think that would take a triple platform and we could just build across here. That would get us access to here. We could cut down a lot of these trees to get a, a kind of a quick start. Same with the other side maybe plant some trees for some close access of logs and then start building levees. And that's not going to help us for the first bad tide, but I'm thinking we can at least get the work going. That is, that is still very far in the future. So the only thing I'm going to do for right now is at least unlock our triple platforms and build a road across our dam just so we can get access to here. We've reached the last day of the drought and I want to actually take advantage of this upper river that we worked so hard for. So you can see we've used maybe half of the water in our downstream river. And this would be a lot worse if we hadn't built that dam downstream. But this is where the new water supply really comes in handy. Because what we can do is we can just top off downriver. So we'll open up the dams. That's going to give a surge of water. We've got a little bit too much coming in, but that's okay. This is going to dry off pretty quickly. But as that flows down, that's going to give us a nice top off of everything in here. And you can see that would allow us to get through a pretty long drought. Like other than the bad tide, this is a pretty good supply of water because it's pretty deep. It's three height. We could keep topping this off like every two days or every three days and keep going. There is the end of the drought. We handle that way better than the second drought. 
as the drought ends, I'm going to go ahead and drop these two because I don't want it to completely overflow as water starts coming down the river again. We'll also make sure these are letting water through so it doesn't flood up there. So that cycle went really well. I think we're in good shape. We finally started to get through our tree production backlog. You can see lots of logs starting to pile up. We've got our new center of industry starting to form. We've got more housing. And very importantly, we've started to build our water supply for the bad tide. We've also got a good supply of potatoes and other foods kind of stockpiled. Finally, we extended our dam downriver as well so that we got more green space to work with, letting us plant a lot more oak trees for long term because we are really going to need it as we start building up our first mega dam. But that is going to be it for this episode of Timberborn. I hope you've been enjoying this playthrough as much as I, as I have. If you've been finding it interesting, I encourage you to like and subscribe, and I hope to catch you next time.